go and try to make them pay their way. Well, this has all gone wrong, because Five was originally there. Pardon. <laughs> and we'll reveal more about our own Chateau experience. It's a balance, and finding that balance is really, really hard. There'll be highs. That's it, that's it. Yeah! And lows. Oh, these stairs will be the death of me, I think. <laughs> but however hard the going gets, Whoa. for these plucky Brits, nothing beats life in their very own castle. <laughs> be wacky wedding. Is it a wig? No. <laughs> As the pressure is on to impress special friends. Right, let's see where you are. Oh, there you are. Your table three. You on this table on our table? New chateau owners call in the troops. From what we'd like to see by lunchtime, ceilings and walls all with a coat of paint on. <laughs> As they struggle to get their B and B up and running. Yeah, the panelling's come off and the wall has kind of disintegrated behind it. A bike mad couple search for their dream chateau. Who are crying? Absolutely beautiful. I've never seen you like this. Can't talk. <laughs> And a DIY fanatic faces a race against time to prepare for a big event. At the moment, I'm looking at it, and I know it does look like a mess. It looks like a total mess. Across France, there are hundreds of spectacular chateaus for sale. And most of them are a lot cheaper than you think. This is the 18th century 14 bedroom Chateau de la Rouche, which was snapped up for 380,000 pounds by Link. I don't think I ever thought I'd live in a chateau. I don't think I ever thought that that would be something that would happen to me. We just couldn't have anything like this in the UK at all. It's impossible. It's, it's impossible unless you have millions of pounds and we just, we don't have millions of pounds, especially mm. now. Located in the Pays de la Loire region of Western France, the couple moved here with their two children nine months ago and hoped to turn it into a B&B &B by the end of the summer. Having already spent three quarters of their £90,000 budget, they need to start getting guests in fast. We have a very strong need to get paying customers in because yeah. our, the budget's running out. Otherwise, we're going to have to beg, steal and borrow to be able to survive the winter. They recently had their new septic tank put in and got all the plumbing working. Now the chateau needs to be completely redecorated, as it's all in a bit of a state, especially the entrance hall and reception rooms. With their first guests due in just nine weeks' time, they have their work cut out. So short-term plan is trying to get the communal areas ready. So that's the entrance hall, the stairs that we've got here, the sitting room, uh, and the upstairs corridors. Unsweet guest rooms nearly ready. It's, it's very presentable, we need to furnish it, we need to get it kind of looking at its best, but it's, it's nearly there. It's all about being completely ready to be able to start uh, get the house generating some income for us, really. To help speed things along, Tim has roped into some free labour in the form of his mate Dale. As uh, Tim and I say, two morons is better than one. <laughs> <laughs> that bodes well, sort of. Out of the way. They've just cut some wood to create a windowsill on the stairwell. How good are your measurements, Timmy? Amazing. Is it going to fit? Of course. Oh, bang on. Like a dream. Yeah. It's fitted much better than I hoped it was. <laughs> Given my rudimentary carpentry skill. Good work, chaps. Tim's plan is to cover the stonework underneath the window with plasterboard. But that first means filling the wonky 18th century chateau walls, which is no easy job. This is the map stuff that's used for bonding plasterboard onto walls. We've used it here to level the uh, window sill out. And I'm just using it to fill some of these holes so we've got a bit more of a better surface to stick the plasterboard to when we come to do that. Upstairs, Rebecca's turning her hand to bed upholstering. Another attempt to keep the costs down. I bought the bed for 39 euros and it was covered in pink velvet that was really, really grubby and disgusting. 
And I'd never upholstered a bed before. 39 euros wasn't much money to lose if I messed it all up. So I just covered it with some of this just simple linen fabric and then add some, and you glue this on to hide all the staples and everything. If you were to buy a bed like this, uh, sort of looking online for new ones, they're sort of thousands of pounds, so it's a good way to save money. It just takes a bit of time, but it's quite satisfying. My angel would be impressed. After gluing and trimming down the fabric, it's job done. Ta-da! <laughs> good sense of achievement. I think for a first attempt, it's pretty good. I'm happy. Really pleased with it. This will certainly be a great addition. Can't afford to rest on their laurels. In the last 12 months, almost one in three properties bought by foreign buyers in France have been from the UK. Hoping to join the growing band of expat chateau owners are bike mad Essex couple Martin and Kim. It started about three years ago. We was at home and I had basically heard Kim drop something in the kitchen and oh, she says, I think I've got arthritis coming in my hands. And um, it was a case of the clock started ticking in my head and I thought, realistically, we've got to move somewhere warmer. Martin, an electrician, and housewife Kim plan to sell their home in Essex, giving them a budget of £500,000 to buy a chateau that has the potential to pay for itself. The idea is obviously to buy a chateau or a manor house that we can actually have a business with. Really, we want some jeeps at the side so that we can rent those out. You know, there's so much ideas that we've got, but until we see the property, um, that's when we can say, yeah, that is the one. They may not know exactly what they're looking for, but there are some things they can't live without. Really? He won't look at anything else. He'll look at the outer buildings, what he can do. Then he'll look at the house. But for me, it's got to be the kitchen. I've got to have a nice kitchen. And what about those bikes? How many bikes have you got, Martin? Not enough. Three, five, I've got five you've bikes. got three in the, in the garage five. already. Now, you're not going to bring them to France. She's entitled to her opinion. <laughs> Martin and Kim have lined up five chateaus to see. The first one is in the Nouvelle Aquitaine region of Western France, where they're meeting estate agent Janice. Hi, hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Welcome. Thank you very much. She'll be taking them around the 19th century Chateau La Brodière. It has eight bedrooms and plenty of outbuildings, perfect to create gîtes and for Martin to have his man cave. It's in budget at a very reasonable £420,000 and it looks in good condition. Stunning. So this is the front. You've got two beautiful turrets here. Stunning. I feel like crying. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. I've never seen you like this. Can't talk. Blimey, that's some first impression. It's the first time this chateau's been on the market for almost a century as it's been home to generations of the same family. So here we've got uh, the main living area. It's beautiful. Actually. As you can beautiful. see, it's a great room in summer, but you can also imagine cosy winters here, sitting by the fire, chatting, enjoying the wonders of France. <laughs> Can't talk. He loves it. He absolutely loves it. Um, I don't know yet. Stunning, Piper, stunning. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. Maybe the kitchen will whet Kim's appetite. As you can see, it's fully fitted. All your amenities. Obviously, at some point, you may want to update it, but currently, it's functioning. We've got a lot of space here. As you can see, have one big, long kitchen here with a table and chairs in here. Doors open in the summer. Yeah. Very nice. Martin can certainly see the potential, but I'm not sure Kim's convinced yet. Here's hoping the rest of the chateau will be more to her taste. Coming up, Tim and Rebecca step up their plans to get the beat. Oh, yeah, 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 the cellar can be absolutely fine. If you're looking at the sink like that, you've probably got more issues than... Uh... <laughs> more time on your hands than you need. Martin and Kim still don't see eye to eye. I'll no could... Harley-Davidson. No, no bikes I've got a lovely 1952 Sunbeam 
which would go beautiful in this room. And we prepare to host a wedding for some of Angel's closest friends. And these guys kind of changed my direction but creatively. I've just been totally inspirational. I'm Dick Strawbridge, and along with my wife Angel, we've been renovating our French chateau into a home and business for the last four years. To keep ourselves, we rely on hosting big events like weddings, organising, planning and preparing for the bride and groom's big day takes a lot of work. Right, so canopies. Often around the clock to ensure everything is just right. Everything just has got to be perfect, you know. Everything you do, your reputation is on the line. So far, we've managed to host 24 weddings without any hitches. You may kiss your... But next up, we have an extra special one. Because Angel's dearest friends, John and Miguel, are getting married here tomorrow. I've had John and Miguel's wedding present here for a year. <laughs> this was a find, you know. You do not find monogrammed bed linen very, very often. It was like <laughs> the, the angels had sent it down to me. And these guys I've known for a lot of years. Many, many years ago, I got this phone call. I said, hey, we're going to open a shop up on Brick Lane. Do you want to be part of it? And I was like, God, yeah, definitely. I wanted to be in their game. These were the guys that kind of really introduced me to sort of like circus. It was just been totally inspirational. We're expecting nearly 80 guests tomorrow, who all need to be watered and fed at the wedding banquet in the orangery. On top of that, John, Miguel and the others are staying for the whole weekend, so we've had to ensure all the guest rooms are in pristine condition. With every special guests. Scooby Doo's here. <laughs> it's the first time Angel and I have ever hosted such a monumental moment in any of our friends' lives. All we can hope for now is for it to all go well on the big day. But we're not the only ones having to tackle a wedding this year. 180 miles away in the Limousin, Fiona Jones is battling to prepare for her first wedding. She lives in the stunning 12th century 13 bedroom Chateau de Magillier and has been single handedly renovating it for the past six years. I'm a woman of many talents. <laughs> I can plaster and I know a lot about building and all of those sort of things. And then there's also all of the design aspect as well. That's all part of it. That's why I came to France and I bought the castle and I do enjoy it. And I'd get so bored just sitting there doing nothing. It would kill me. Located in the centre of France, she's hoping to open her chateau as a high-end B&B and wedding venue in that means a complete restoration of the castle's first floor. So far, she's completed the hallway. But all that's on hold and she's been asked to host her first ever wedding in the Chateau's grounds in 14 weeks' time. A booking she can't afford to turn down. I did want to start creating all of the bedrooms, but because of the wedding now coming up, um, priorities have changed. So work's going to now progress towards the wedding. The couple want a marquee on the south side of the Chateau. But its ageing facade hasn't been touched in decades and it needs refreshing. So, what my problem is going to be is falling through the window. This way. Fiona has to make sure everything is ship shape in time for those all important wedding photos. So, there's one of these that's come off and that can go back on um, and I keep that safe. So today she's replacing the wood on the windows, but with 34 to restore, it could take some time. The windows haven't actually been touched for about 30 years and they've been painted different colours. Let's see if that's the same, whether it's any longer. 
and there are just so many windows. And some I need putty and all of the glass needs replacing as well. It's a lot of work, especially as she's doing it all by herself. Oops. At the moment I'm looking at it and I know it does look like a mess. It looks like a total mess. At Chateau de la Rouche, Tim and Rebecca are preparing for their first B&B guests who are due in three months' time. To finish the ensuite bathroom, they've come up with an imaginative way to save cash. They've bought an old dresser from a local Brocant to use as a sink unit. I quite enjoy kind of bringing things back to life and getting them to work again. Uh, and uh, I'm not a massive fan of, of all modern fittings everywhere at all, so no, I'm more than happy to do it. Which is good. <laughs> a couple after my own heart. Ta da! Woohoo! But that should now fit the sink in. Okay, should we try? Buying this unit ready done, Kuko picked up, cost less than £90. Pretty pleased with it. I'm looking forward to seeing it with the tiles in so that it looks a bit neater. But yeah, I think it looks really cool. But it turns out there is something they splashed out on. I'm slightly worried he's going to cut it wrong and waste one of my very expensive tiles. I'm not sure Tim knows how expensive they were. I think they were about £25 a tile. So quite expensive, but I didn't need that many of them, so I thought it was OK. Yeah, so just don't break them. No pressure, Tim. No pressure. Phew, now let's hope it fits. All right, there we have one piece of tile that should... Can I just lift the... So, is that going to be enough? to stop the water going underneath the bead of silicon because it looks like oh, yeah, quite a yeah, big no, hole to me. If you're looking at your sink like that, you've probably got more issues than... Uh... <laughs> more time on your hands than you need. What do you think? Good. It may only be a sink, but it's another step forward towards Tim and Rebecca opening their B&B and making some much-needed cash. In the Nouvelle Aquitaine region, Martin and Kim have a budget of £500,000 to buy their dream chateau. Coming through to my favourite room, which is the study. The first one they're looking at is Chateau La Brodière, which is on the market for £420,000. Yeah, I could, have, I could have the old 52 in the corner. I no could, Harley Davidson. No, no got, bikes. I've got in a lovely the house. 1952 Sunbeam, which would go beautiful in this room if it was going to be used as a study. But I don't think we'd use it as a study. What would you use it then? I don't know, Kim. Bike obsessed Martin is certainly seeing lots of potential, but so far Kim doesn't seem sold in this place. Each of these turrets ah. go in has a turret bathroom. <laughs> it's an actual toilet. <laughs> It's different. It's different. Here you've got one of the upstairs bedrooms. Again, as you can see, beautiful light room. It's got all the visual features, isn't it? Yeah. Same as downstairs. I think we could actually live, actually. Seriously. It's, it's just... I mean, I know the decor. It isn't what we would have, but it's, it's, it's nothing major. It's really beautiful, really like it, really like it. I'm going to start crying again. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm not sure Kim can cope with any more. It's been Thank great you. meeting you. Thank, Thank you, you, very you. Much. This chateau is ready to move into, and with some TLC, could be a cracking investment. I really liked it, I really did like it. It's got lots of potential. Uh, I could actually see us living there. No, no way. No way. I didn't like it at all. I didn't like the feeling. Didn't work for you? It didn't work for me at all, no. We, I mean, we did agree that both got to like the same property. Yeah. So therefore that one now is, is a no-go. Yeah, yeah. Well, that rules that one out. So it's off to the next chateau that lies 200 miles further south, close to the Spanish border. The 15th century Chateau d'Espelungue.
It has eight bedrooms, several outbuildings, a swimming pool, and it's already run as a B&B. At around £330,000, it's well within their budget and could prove to be... Hi. Bonjour, Hello. monsieur. Welcome to Donier. So this is it? So this is it. Amazing. This is, this is uh, pretty fantastic. Cool. See, coming in, I have to be careful that on gravel, this isn't very motorcycle friendly, but no, it's, it's no, no big deal. And in fact, it's good to be motorcycle friendly because there's there's quite a market for motorcyclists in Chambre d'Ots. Oh, is there? Oh, really? Particularly if you've got somewhere they can store the bikes. Yeah. yeah that would be yeah. important for us. That would definitely be important for us. Right. You've because got the barns here, so there's plenty of space for storing bikes securely. Excellent. Estate agent Charlie seems to have ticked one box already for Martin, as there's space for storing his and any guest's bikes. Right, this is the, the bigger of the two barns, which would make oh, wow. at oh, least one yeah. enormous sheet, if not, if not two. This is a man cave. Isn't it? Oh. Look at the height. Oh, that's fantastic. And you've got the same height again above. If you were to divide it, Vertically, you could have two 100 square meter sheets just in this one barn. So that's two, three, four bedroomed houses, effectively. It's two crying houses. out for jeets. Okay. So this is not a man cave. It certainly isn't. It's jeets. It makes first. sense to me, is it? For Martin? Coming up. Come on, let's get a Right. Let's get it right. Tim and Rebecca call in more help as they race to meet their deadlines to open their B&B. It's impressive seeing all the stuff get done and thinking that's like days and days of work being done in a couple of hours. John and Michael, come aboard! It's time to impress Angela's friends on their big day. Old friends are here and it's lovely. And it's make or break for Fiona. If this glass breaks, there's going to be more euros in my swear jar. The Chateau de Majulier, owner Fiona Jones is now just two weeks away from holding her first ever wedding reception on the south side of her castle. To ensure there's a perfect backdrop, she spent the last five weeks painstakingly restoring each of the 34 windows and frames. Yeah, this is the last window to be restored. I don't want any more glass to fall out. Although it would appear she's left the worst one till last. I'm trying not to actually damage the window more than I have to. Take, oh, my God. <sighs> and try and lever it up without... As gentle, gently as possible. <sighs> lever out. And the glass is literally... If you look here, the glass is literally tittering with, with no putty, so... They could just drop out. I have to be very careful with them. They haven't been treated or painted for, for 30, 40 years. So um, they're just about hanging on in there. Very careful. That's it. Slowly, slowly catch a monkey. There you go. Easy does it, Fiona. Right, let's get them downstairs. If Fiona can't manage to rescue the frames, she's going to have to find a way to replace them. And with only two weeks to go before the wedding, I don't fancy her chancing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the remaining putty that's holding on by a thread very carefully, try and save the glass then everything's going to be stripped back, use a sander, and then I've got a new sheet of glass to go in here. First task is to remove the old putty without breaking any more glass. OK, so I'm just going to use a really small chisel. And careful. It's old, thin, original glass. What I don't want to do is just go in there with a big hammer and chisel everything out because the glass will break. I do it little by little and then I should get out all of the old bits of old putty. 
There we go. It's literally been hanging on in there by a thread. That's one down, only one more to go. If this glass breaks, there's going to be more euros in my swear jar. You sacra blurs. You know what? I think someone's actually glued one side. Why? Beastie doesn't want to come out. Got a crack in it now. That's it. Okay. That's it. So close, yet so far. Should have done that in the first place, shouldn't I? Half an hour later, I'm just going to go in the corner, say a few words and fill up that swear jar. Preparing for any shutter wedding is a big responsibility. And today at our place, it doesn't get more important than this. We're hosting the wedding of Angela's dearest friends, John and Miguel, so everything needs to be extra, extra perfect. But it should be fun, as it's vintage circus themed. That's incredible. As always. Honestly, the third time in my life, I'm like, I am so stressed. <laughs> Old friends are here, and it's lovely. Is this your hair, or is it a wig? <laughs> Having assured everyone is present and correct, it's time to get the show on the road. Will that call come aboard? I will now ask for the rings. John and Miguel are very special friends. So to be able to offer our home for their wedding day is magical and a privilege. Congratulations, John and Michael. I now pronounce you husband and husband. Grooms, kiss. <laughs> Well, that went perfectly. I couldn't be more proud. But the pressure's on for our team to ensure the reception goes like clockwork. We've transformed our orangery into a circus-themed party room, and we've joined everyone for the celebration. But for us, there's always things to do. Hello, darling, where are you? Let's have a little look. Your table one, lovely. Right, let's see where you are. Oh, there you are, your table two, you're on this table, on our table. It's tradition in this part of France. When the grooms arrive, we stand up with our serviettes. It's a fairy tale setting. Got two fairies here, well, actually, to be queens. So, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. We couldn't ask for anything more. We're really grateful. The energy in, in the orangery right now is like, it's popping. John and Miguel, I can see how relaxed they are, and I'm just, you know, that just makes me happy. This is what this place was meant to do. Further east at Chateau de la Rouche, Tim and Rebecca have invited more of their friends over to help get their B&B up and running in time. First impressions are it's really nice, really big, and we think they're crazy to buy it. It scares the living daylights out of me, but um, they're the couple to take it on, definitely. The ensuite bathroom is now ready, thanks to some last minute touches to the sink. But with the entrance, stairwell, and living room to do before the first guests arrive, the boys need to get stuck in and fast. <laughs> yeah, the painting skills that this team of, of workmen have got is just is second to none. It's absolutely second to none. You know, we are going to turn that, that hallway into something. We're going to transform it in a day. It's going to be incredible. Come on, let's get all that. Right, 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 right. The fact that they're willing to drive all this way and be away from their wives and children, although that bit might be a bit of a blessing for them. But I think um, the fact that they're willing to give up their time when they're such busy people as well is, is pretty amazing for us, definitely. Yeah. Tim said that we would come over, he'd bring the wine, we bring the beer, 
and maybe do a little bit of work on the shutters. Yeah, I'll try shutters. Shutters, like, yeah. as in outside in the sun, where it's nice. <laughs> Here we are, inside, without the sunshine on my back. While some friends are painting the hallway, old pal Mick has been tasked with a job in the living room, as the wooden panels around the walls need replacing. So all the original panel work had, had rotted out. So Tim had got some panels which were quite similar. So we're just trying to trick the eye and get away with using something that isn't the same at all, really. But uh, a radiator in front of it, that all uh, that will hide it. Tim is under some illusion that I was actually a carpenter, which of course I'm not. But uh, anyway, we'll give it a blast. Well done, give it a go. With a chateau full of helpers, Tim and Rebecca plan to utilise every minute of their time here. A lot of jobs can get done just with time and, and hard graft. And they've declared themselves the DIY SOS team coming over, so we have high expectations about their ability. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Down in the south of France, in the Occitani region, chateau shoppers Martin and Kim are looking at the eight-bedroom Chateau d'Espelongue, which is on the market for £330,000. Having already seen the possibility of creating gîtes from the surrounding outbuildings, they're hoping the inside of the chateau has just as much potential. I'll let you lead the way. This is the original doorway, as you can see, and we go in and there... Oh, wow. ...is... The stone staircase going all the way up nice. to the second floor. Bare right. And here we have a lovely TLC. But looking past that. It's nothing it's nothing too amazing. No. Is, it? is this um proper stone, do you think? Oh, I shouldn't think so. That's it's not been, what they would have built with here. It's no. all been cladded. So it's, yeah, it's probably over, cladding. Yeah. yeah. That'd have to come down. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's nothing major though, both. Right, let's have a look at the kitchen. Thank you. Oh. So a nice light, airy kitchen. This looks out over the, the little garden at the side. Kitchen the definitely needs updating. Needs updating. Yeah, I think the yeah. whole place does. You know? I mean, you've, got, you've got plastic ceilings. Kitchen is a big thing for me. I'd have to knock that wall down and put that all in one. You've got another room behind here. I have you? Yeah. Okay. okay. So you could also go that way. Go that way. Yeah. That's quite a lot of work for the kitchen, and that's not the only job that needs to be done. Oh, look at that! I mean, you, you'd probably want to. Oh, I'd, I'd the upgrade rewire most of it. I'd upgrade it most yeah. of this year. I mean, as 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 and when we do rooms, I would obviously upgrade Bring it up to all the electrics. Yeah, I mean, yeah. obviously it's, it's what I do. So there's obviously is that a bathroom or something above? They've obviously had a leak up there, and yeah. it's all come yeah. down. So. Fixing the ceiling and replacing the electrics, what about the upstairs? Oh, oh, the green. <laughs> right, this room here is the one chambre dot which is on this level. The other four are up in the roof. This is one used for when there are big parties or okay. families. This room's functional for B&B guests, but it'll need updating before they can rent it out. It just no, needs painting. It's paint. it's yeah, paint. you can see through this though. This room. Oh yeah, cool. Not all you of know, it's so You far. could have like really nice curtains along here. Those sweepy ones. You know that you have yeah, a big can, ties. Listen, you could dress this room to make it look million dollars. Yeah, absolutely. And it, you know, it doesn't. It won't take a lot yeah, to do it. And here's a nice little surprise. Do you remember there's a little tiny turret? Yeah. Here we are with a little window. Oh. Isn't that cute? <laughs> oh, no, it's really cute. It's like a little doll's house. <laughs> Come here. I think this is lovely. It's a little doll's house. Oh, goodness. You can have some fun in uh, That's great, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Toward on inside, Agent Charlie has one more thing to show Martin and Kim. I love a pool. Yeah, that's uh, that's nice. Yeah. Once again, it just needs just needs tidying up, yeah, Martin. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Bring some more plants. This place is great value for money, 
but there's lots of work to do to bring it up to date. But will it be too much for Martin and Kim? It's exactly what we were looking for, really, but I didn't realise how much work that's got to be done inside. The ground floor and the first floor needs improvement. I think on a, on a scale of one to ten, I would put up probably five, six. I was going to say that, a five or a six. Yeah, yeah. definitely a five it or a six. Yeah. Agree with you there. Thank you very much. <laughs> they might not have found their dream shuttle this time, but they're determined to keep looking. Coming up. Fiona shows no sign of letting up on the race to be ready for the wedding. See that? The way to please me, just buy me a power tool and a toolbox. <laughs> and Tim and Rebecca's B&B plans hit a snag. Yeah, the panelling's come off and the wall has kind of disintegrated behind it. At Chateau de Majulier, Fiona is battling to restore the last of the 34 window frames. She needs to complete them before hosting her first ever wedding reception in two weeks' time. Look, that's just glue. I don't even know what that is. That is just, that's not putty. There you go. You always have one, don't you? You always have one window. Some idiots done something stupid too. It's always the way. Fiona needs to remove all the old putty, or in this case glue, before she can even start sanding the frames. Well, you say would it be easier to buy new windows. What I'm trying to do at the moment is keep some kind of originality to the chateau. Just want to sort of preserve as much as I possibly can. You see how these windows have the little wooden plugs to join all the, all the joinery? How lovely is that? This is just the reason why I want to try and save these windows to preserve them. And all glue and some screws. Let's knock them in slightly so they don't catch as I'm sanding because they've kind of come a little to the surface. It's just... See that? The way to please me, just buy me a power tool and a toolbox. <laughs> Who needs diamonds? Well said. Can't think of anything better than a rub down with a sander. Now it's a tricky bit of putting back the old window panes. Let's hope nothing breaks this time. It's old, it's got some scratches on, but I think it's nice to have some old pieces of glass that have been there. I completely agree. It's great using original glass, but putting it back in is always a challenge. So it's not actually, it's actually wonky, but it doesn't matter, I'll, I'm going to tack that in anyway. I'm just going to put them in a little bit, just to hold the glass into place. OK, that's great. So I'm just going to get some putty in there. I'm not going to be drying for days, so... There's more than enough time in the next 20 minutes to just get it on and tidy it up afterwards. It's another job Fiona has managed to take off the list. I won't be happy until the windows are completely ready, they're painted, they're rehung, and then I know the southern side is complete. Um, but, you know, I've got... got well, I've got two weeks to do a combination of jobs here, so until then I can't kind of quite relax. At Chateau de la Rouge, Tim and Rebecca's idea to bring in their mates is paying off. Tim, with the help of Dale, now has just one last piece of plasterboard to attach to the wall to create the new windowsill. In terms of uh, our very low standards, uh, it's perfectly adequate. The entrance to the chateau has come on leaps and bounds. We have got the ceilings in here. We've got a first coat of paint on the wall, so there's been a lot of filling and sanding gone into these, and these are now looking great for having a coat of paint. So this is the final colour they're going to be. 
there's been lots of progress made in just under a day. But as with all chateaus, some things don't quite go to plan. Tim's friend Mick, who's replacing the wooden panels in the living room, has unearthed a problem. Yeah, the panelling's come off and the wall has kind of disintegrated behind it. Yeah, the main problem was we moved the wardrobe and the wardrobe was a good integral part of this room because it hid all the horrors that somebody knew quite well that were hiding behind that. Luckily it's not serious and nothing a bit of clever camouflage can't sort. Squint your eyes a little bit, Tim, look, you can see the fusion. We've got enough to make one for there. We've got enough to replicate this into here. Some of that's usable for there. We've got some little bits here to make another little bit here. And, uh, it's nearly finished. Before you know it, it'll, it'll all be hunky-dory, I promise you. Cool. Sometimes renovating a chateau means trends, they're still on target to be ready for their first B&B guests. They've done, a, they've done a perfectly competent job. No, it's good, it's good, it's good having lots of hands on deck, yeah, and we've done a, we've, we've got a lot done. They certainly saved us a few days of work. And what better way to say thank you than to lay on a delicious feast? Thank you everybody for coming. We are genuinely uh, flattered that you've made the journey over here to help us and it's lovely to have all, uh, all our friends with us for the first time. And I feel like we've made massive progress today, so thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Sante. Cheers. 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 Good day. Cheers. Cheers. Next time. This is incredible. Martin and Kim step up the search for their dream chateau. This is just what I'm hoping for. Fiona faces a race to be ready for the wedding. Oh, the glamour of it all. For Tim and Rebecca, crunch time is upon them. I'm not feeling too under pressure at the moment, but ask me again later and I probably will be. And we welcome back some familiar faces who are going all out on the next renovation project. Chateau life. Yeah. Things falling apart around you. How do you start picking up the pieces? The